How's everyone doing? Um, very excited to be here at uh, Montenegro right now. Guess I'll wait for the slides. Um, hi, my name is Adam. I've been working with Loopring for two years now. Um, and today I'm going to give a talk on vertical roll-up products, the need for layer two applications, and our super app the Loopring wallet. Um, but first, I'm going to give a bit of a background on our roll-up. There we go. Um, so we built a application-specific roll-up. Um, we're the longest-running roll-up on, loop on Ethereum. We launched in February of 2020. And we've been around for six years. We originally started as an order books DEX protocol um, on Ethereum and built our rollup to scale our order book. And now we do a lot more than just order books. We support NFTs, gaming, DeFi, and payments. And we've settled just under $6 billion of total trading volume on our layer two. And what makes us different from other rollups is that we control the entire stack. We've built every component ourselves, from our open source ZK rollup protocol to our relayer that handles all the off chain duties that makes our rollup run, and to the products built atop, like our non custodial exchange, loopring.io, and our smart contract wallet, the loopring wallet. And we've done all this work and built across the stack to custom fit and optimize, oh, there we go, optimize our loopring applications. Um, one sec. Um, and this is what makes loopring a bit of a different beast. We are builders on top of our own rollup. I know that app chains are very hot right now. You can consider loopring to be the first app chain and really a front row seat into our app chains and layer threes will be built up. So what's new on layer two? Scalability. Um, <laughs> we solved it, right? Rollups are here, but not enough people are going to them. We've got you know, these airdrop hunters, going from one chain to the next, and that's great. But we finally have you know, this expanded design space that allows applications to flourish on, on layer two that's just not possible on layer one. Um, so why aren't more people using rollups? For one, UX. It's, it's hard, right? It's not easy as a user to live in this multi-rollup world. There's a ton of layer twos, and I have to choose which one am I going to go to, which tokens should I onboard with, and yeah, wallet providers don't really make it easy on me. Um, you have to switch RPCs when you go from one network to the next. It's all very cumbersome. Self-custody, it's still complex, right? Um, Convenience is key, and I think we've seen this week that you know, it is still hard to do self-custody. Um, like, I would love nothing more to you know, be at Thanksgiving dinner and say, hey, give me your phone, download this wallet, without having to intimidate my in-laws. We would love to get to the point where anyone could download a wallet without having to ask for 24 words. Oh. You know, you got to get this paper and this pen, write it down, split up these keys, give one to grandma, another to your aunt. No. The next wave of crypto users will not stick around for this. So we see it as, you know, two problems. Apps, or UX and apps specifically. And yes, we need layer two killer applications if we want to spur roll-up adoption. Right now, there's a ton of scale and not a lot of use case. There's a lot of like, infrastructure that's being built. We have rollups as a service you know, is now a thing. We have the OP stack, and it's all great. Um, but you know, we have a ton of layer twos that are coming online. There's a lot of block space, 
And, you know, we need consumer layer two applications and wallets to make rollups shine. So this is what Loopring solves. Everything that we do at Loopring is in the name of UX, from our rollup to the apps built atop. We make Ethereum easy to, to use. We started out as this order book DEX protocol and built our rollup to scale it. And now we're kind of solving our own problem again. We are building applications to bring in the masses. And I understand that every app is bringing in the masses, but we're in a unique position to actually do something about it. About it. We could tailor the experience because we control the entire stack. Um, so with all this block space, we want to fill it up with you know, a super app. And this is our layer two smart contract wallet. Um, so we built the first L2 um, smart contract wallet on Ethereum. It has ZK and social recovery baked into the experience. And it really is this mobile gateway to layer two services, where you know, gas is abstracted from the experience. Um, and yeah, like very low fees to transact, to trade, to stake, and everything you else you want to do in um, you know, Web3. So I think you guys know, but this, you know, this wallet, it's not a normal EOA address. It is a smart contract, which gives it some cool properties. Um, we have a, our, the private key is decoupled from the address, which um, if your key is ever exposed, you could replace it. We have meta transactions. You could pay for gas with other tokens than ETH. We have multi-call operations. You could batch together commands. It's 100% non-custodial. And shortly, we will be supporting ERC4337, which will further decentralize a lot of our operations. Um, so these you know, social recovery and smart contract wallets, they offer better UX, but they also have upgraded security features. And it's important because self-custody is complex. And we see it every day on you know, crypto Twitter, these nightmare stories, another wallet gets drained, and it's terrible to see. Um, and the problem really lies with EOA wallets. Um, not only are you know, these seed phrases a single point of failure, but the UX is messy. Like, I think we can all agree. Um, you have to write down these words onto a piece of paper, and just the whole time you're thinking, you know, what is going to go wrong? Um, and not to mention, it's just, you know, a ton of mental overhead to remember everything. So social recovery, um, back one slide, but yeah, social recovery, it removes the complexity from self-custody by replacing seed phrases with guardians. And now these guardians are your security team. They could be anyone from an institution, family, friends that you choose, or wallets that you own. And if your phone is ever lost, you could then, you and your security team could then lock this wallet and replace it onto another device. Um, so the Loopring wallet is this, you know, personal vault. We have theft protection, bunch of safeguards, whitelisted addresses, 2FA security, daily limits. You could set, you know, let's just say 0.1 as your limit. That's like the maximum amount that it can, you know, move out of this wallet in a day. And, you know, in the event that your wallet is ever compromised and this attacker were to bypass 2FA security, you know, they, they can only take that daily limit in a 24-hour period, which buys you and your security team time. Um, so we, you know, we have cheap fees, we have security, but it's not enough. Um, we need to be able to do something useful uh, with this wallet. And this is where kind of the Loopring wallet shines. We have a ton of ZK applications baked into the experience. Um, it really is this one-stop shop. We have NFTs, if you want to trade, we have an order book, AMM, um, payments, fiat on-ramps. Um, Loopring Earn, this is you know, various ways to earn yield. If you want to stake ETH using Lido or Rocket Pool, you could also stake LRC and earn some protocol fees. You can LP, you can market make. 
If you want to express yourself with another, I guess, financial tool, we have options. Um, and this, we, like, this is dual investment, which is a very popular centralized exchange product that we now brought to kind of like a self-custodial, I guess, mode. Um, so if, you know, all you centralized exchange traders that love this feature, you can now be your own bank and access, you know, dual investment. Just this week, we launched Block Trade, um, and this is our OTC trading feature. So liquidity on demand, it's a huge advantage. Um, and it's a problem, you know, sometimes on rollups, you're not always going to get your desired liquidity. So with Block Trade, um, you are able to tap into multiple sources of liquidity without having to sacrifice self-custody. You're able to tap into centralized exchange liquidity without having to put your assets on a SEX. Um, in the future, or soon, you'll be able to tap into DeFi liquidity without having to touch a vulnerable bridge contract. Um, and this is part of our DeFi port design, which leverages our locked asset feature. So when you're on our wallet, you know, and you want to make a swap on our AMM, you see that there's not, you know, desired or sufficient liquidity, we inform you, hey, you can get a better price um, using block trade. And once you do, the, you know, you see the price, it looks good, you sign the transaction, and then market makers are able to fill it within seconds, if not milliseconds. So we believe giving users the best you know, convenience, liquidity on demand is a huge advantage. And we think we can convert you know, a lot of centralized exchange traders who now want to you know, be their own bank. So Loopring also supports NFTs. We have minting, trading, and transferring of ERC721 and 1155. And we just launched our red packet feature this month. And what these red packets are, it allows anyone to send an NFT or an ERC20 in mass for very cheap costs um, using a QR code. Um, and now that anyone could go find this QR code online, offline, wherever, scan it, claim it, and then own it. And it, you know, not like very novel, but we think this could be a game changer um, in the sense that the NFT experience on layer one is broken. Um, it's, you know, the transaction costs are way too high to transact with NFTs. To send a simple ERC-1155 on Ethereum is around 51,000 gas. Um, that same transaction on Loopring is 175th the cost, 700 gas. And the beauty of Loopring is that you can mint a million NFTs for under a dollar. Um, but it becomes very expensive when you want to move a million NFTs to a million different addresses. It's, you know, 700 gas times a million, which becomes very expensive, roughly $100,000. But this is where red packets come in. It doesn't matter if you're moving one you know, NFT or a million, it only costs that one NFT trans transfer cost, that's 700 gas. And then users that want to claim it, they pay uh, you know, a couple of pennies to claim this NFT. So we've brought the NFT distribution costs down to near zero. And we think a ton of applications will open up. One that makes sense is just like gaming. It's a natural fit. Um, you know, the economics make sense that anyone could create their Pokemon Go-like experiences. Um, we launched this like three weeks ago. Everyone's been sharing in our community these red packets um, on Twitter and on Discord. It's been very cool to see. Um, and one thing that we did see is that just hunting for QR codes is this viral social game that, you know, it levels up any distribution. So whether you're doing an airdrop, um, a loyalty reward program, using red packets does gamify kind of the experience. Um, one more thing, we also have this blind box mechanism. So picture, you know, I'm a game developer, 
and I just want to send one NFT and say it's like very valuable. Call it a milady. Um, and I want to, you know, reward one person, let's say 100 people leveled up in my game, and I give them all a ticket using these red packets, but only one person wins. This is exactly what Spike of Spike Rollups built the week we dropped this. He created you know, this on-chain loop, bo loop box um, and you know, added this another layer of incentives to his game, which was really cool to see. So we're excited to see you know, builders, gamers experiment with this red packet. If you are building a game, please reach out to me. Um, and yeah, our wallet's going multi-network. Um, we're gonna go where the users are. Right now, we're deployed on Ethereum. We're gonna go to Tyco next. They're a very cool generalizable uh, layer two ZK, ZK EVM project. Um, they're launching their testnet A3. We'll be there. Arbitrum will be there. Um, Optimism will probably be there too. And you know, the one, I guess, hurdle for smart contract wallets is it's very expensive to deploy these contracts on Ethereum. With Guardians, it can cost anywhere right now from you know, $50 to $75. But once we're able to um, deploy this Loopring wallet um, on a generalizable layer two with um, post EIP 4844, um, it's going to be negligible to spin up you know, as many smart contract wallets as you want, you know, a couple dollars, if not pennies. Um, so we're excited for all the wallet, you know, smart contract wallet and account abstract and builders in this space. Um, we think it's gonna be a huge moment of adoption. Um, gonna leave you with this. Uh, it's a red packet. Please take a screenshot of this. Um, download the Loopring wallet and, you know, scan the code once you do. There may be a valuable NFT in there. Um, and yes, thank you guys for coming to my talk.